Okay, so this is doing diagnostic for an M400 pin pad. Uh, you can see that it's lugged into a shift right now. So the first thing that we need to do is hit one, five, and nine simultaneously. It's not gonna be immediate, but it'll change here and go into supervisor mode. So you can see I'm gonna hit supervisor on this top thing here. This password is one, six, six, eight, three, two, one. Okay, so you got a lot of different choices here. Uh, since this one, we're gonna focus on diagnostics, so I'm gonna make that choice. And you can see you have a lot of options for there. Uh, what I'm gonna do in this one that's most common is card testing. So if you have a card that's not working or you think you need a pin pad replacement, we're gonna do diagnostics to either see if that's truly a hardware problem or if we need to send it in for replacement. So I'm going to hit card and you have three choices here. You have magnetic reader which is the strip on the side or the strip on the back of a card like this. The smart card which is the little chip or EMV and then contactless is the tap to pay which I have my smart watch instead of a card but Either way, if you have a card that has the uh, radiating lines on it, I don't have one, but um, that would be a tap to pay as well. So that's your contactless reader. So the first thing we're gonna do is the magnetic. And as you can see here, you have track one, two, and three, and then good and error. So what this means is the magnetic strip hidden in this, there's actually three tracks. Most cards don't use all three. Most use two. Track three is only used if you have like a weird fleet card or something like that. That's usually will pop up. So this is just a Russ's card, but I'll show you it happens on a lot of them. So if I swipe this, you can see good on track one and two, meaning that it's reading the magnetic strip just fine on both those tracks. This is a credit and debit card. I got good now two, so it just it keeps accumulating the more cards you try. Here's an in Tevicon in-house card. Okay, so that only has two tracks, but they're on the one or it's actually it's only one track, but it's on number two. So you can see that increased by one. There is no error on one, and then I don't know why it does this track three, because I know it doesn't have a track three, but that's what would happen if it's not reading one of the tracks correctly. Same thing's true with kickback. So I got three and four, just bumped it up by one. So you can see the trend is most cards have two tracks on one and two, and that's it. So to get out of this, we hit the X button. Now I'm gonna go to the smart card reader, and it'll say insert smart card, so I'm gonna do that now. And then I hit okay. And the only thing you're worried about here, because I'm not swiping this, one and two are irrelevant. So you're just looking at customer. And you can see that that says pass. So that means that the smart card reader is working and it's good. If it didn't say pass, if it said error or not present or something like that, that means your card reader for the chip is not working correctly and that needs to be sent in for repair. So the third one, which I'll demonstrate if I get my watch going, just to make sure I have a contactless method. Okay, so I hit contactless reader and you choose this read card and I'm gonna hold this up. And it says remove card, so as soon as I do that, it says test success. So again, that just tells you that the NFC or contactless reader is working correctly. Otherwise, it would say failed or something like that. This is kind of picky, though. I will say just because it's near field frequency, you know, try it more than once. If it does fail, just to make sure that it is working properly. So, oh, last thing on this is it obviously it says hit X to quit or enter to restart. So we're going to hit X. And then if I hit this arrow here on the top, just keep going back to the main menu so I can hit exit and then I always do reboot now granted this will take a little bit to come back online 
you're normally only going to hit the welcome screen when it comes back on, even if you are signed into a shift. It will it will still be fine. It just makes a difference when you ring up a sale and hit cart on pin pad. Then it will trigger the pin pad to expect something. So I'll pause it till we get to that point. Okay, so now we're at the welcome screen and it will stay here until we ring up a sale. This register happens to be signed out of a shift. So um, would you mind just signing in? Because you don't have to ring up a sale or anything like that, but I think signing in will trigger this if it's signed out. So they're, we're getting signed into the shift now. Yeah, there we go. So it changes to register closed, and there we go. Now it's open. So same thing would happen if the, it was signed into a shift and we did this diagnostic and rebooted. All you'd have to do is just ring up a sale, and as soon as you hit card on pin pad, it would go back to this screen. All right, I think that's all I got for this. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make note of here is there are some other issues that uh, people have with either the sound being too uh, quiet or soft. Um, as well as random pin pads being updated. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate how to fix those as well. Uh, I'm in the main menu after you type in the, the password to log in with the supervisor. So instead of going to diagnostics, I'm going to go to administration. And the sound utilities here, you have change volume. And you're, we don't use the headphone volume, we just use the speaker volume. So you can see this is turned all the way up. But I can, it usually will start in the, the middle here. There we go. Okay, so you can see it's now in the middle. If I hit the, the green button here, that gives you a demonstration of the, how loud it is. And then if I max it out again, so it's a little louder, but you can see it's very subtle. These things don't go very loud. The speakers are not great. Um... So that's maxed out. I'm going to exit out of this. And then the reboot that happens randomly, uh, we have noticed that if you go into date and time here at the top, you have your uh, date and time, obviously. And also make sure to check your, day or your time zone, CST, I should say. That's standard time. It'll be daylight savings time sometimes, so CDT. Uh, being that we're in central time zone. But here at the bottom, this 24 slash 48 reboot, we have that set to 3 a.m. Sometimes that will say not yet set. If that's ever that way and you don't have a time input in there, that's when that reboots randomly. And I think, I want to say that's every 24 hours. I don't know what the 48 hour business is about. But we've seen that happen, and once we set a time in this section, it always triggers during that time. It doesn't happen randomly anymore, so that will usually fix your problem with uh, random reboots. Uh, and then once that's done, I just usually go in here. I'm going to set the same time. Whoops. Oh, you can hit back. So if I hit 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0 for hours, minutes, seconds... And then as soon as I hit that, it will reboot. So I wanted to point out here, when it's rebooting, you can see the serial number here. That's also on the back of the pin pad. So if it's mounted on a mount, uh, you can't see it, then a reboot will always display the serial number if it's needed. Then this comes up next. And then we put a logo on this one now. That you can do by applying it uh, with the Premier Portal and Verifone. Or, I'm sorry, EV Pay version. And then you're back at the welcome screen. And again, this is just because we loaded a separate file with the logo on it in the background. Um, but yeah, that's your normal welcome screen like you would have otherwise. Uh, nothing new, but just so you know, you can see what versions you have there and the serial number during reboot.